You have to live your story now the way you want to tell it later yeah. without having to change anything. What you've been through is going to wind up being the message that helps other people that are where you have been. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And I thank you for taking the opportunity and doing this with us, okay? And I want to just ask you, what I'll do is just, I want to find out a little bit about your story because, Abigail, you've got, you've got a lot of experience with suffering that people would never know about with uh with mental health that you know is just is so draining because of what you've gone through and right. yet you've overcome through and and you've done fabulous and you've you've literally you've got a, a story to tell and a message to bring and i want to give you one of those platforms to do it because i think others need to hear this but now when did you first because your your health issue is one of those main things that uh, it's the kidney stones but the number of kidney stones that you produce and manufacture is unreal. Uh, tell me about when you had your first one and then what's happened and not because and I would tell our audience now get ready to get their mind blown because yeah. <laughs> so. so the first time um, that I had a kidney stone was um, my, my junior year in in college. And uh, that was the first time I'd, I'd had a stone and I will never forget it. And I felt a pain like I'd never felt in my life before. And I'm it was excruciating and it was so bad that it took my breath away. And I remember leaning up against the cabinets uh, in my apartment and I was, I immediately called my parents and I said, something is so wrong. I've never felt pain like this in my life. And they said, oh, you know, of course go to the emergency room. Um, and then upon getting to the emergency room, you know, they started doing scans and whatnot. And they said, you've got several kidney stones. And I was like, okay, well, this is horrible. So what, what happens when you have a kidney stone? And they're like, well, they're small enough for you to be able to pass. We're going to keep you here and monitor you and whatnot overnight. And then you go home and you pass them. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, so that's what I did. And I was at school in Virginia. So I called my parents and they said, we want you to go to a urologist here in Atlanta too. So mm -hmm. I ended up flying home. And then that was really the beginning. Uh, I, I thought at the beginning that it was going to be something that we were going to manage in a weekend and that it was going to be like, okay, it's taken care of, you know, I fly home, we've got a plan. Let's, you know, what's the next thing. And uh, it was there at that appointment that um, I was filling out some information and um we realized that it was more than just a kidney stone that I was experiencing, uh, but that I also ha had a bladder disease or what they thought uh, could potentially be a bladder disease. So after that, um, that diagnosis requires surgery um, right. for them to even be able to diagnose you with that. So we did that. And then we found out that I, in fact, did have this bladder disease. So again, I thought the kidney stones were going to be a one-time thing because I know a lot of people, like I'm sure you do. Yeah, I've had I've had it twice in my life. Very painful, okay. but only twice. Right. And and I but when you see somebody who else has had a kidney stone, you're immediately like it's yes. like a connection, like you want to hug them. Like yes. I know yeah. exactly what you've been through. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that it was just going to be something, you know, people say, you know, I passed one or I've had, you know, had this, but then when it came to be every three weeks, then every two weeks, then every week, wow. and that I'm passing stones after stone, after stone, after stone. And I'm like, what is my body doing, you know, to do this? And they can't figure out why. So I was really like in this circle of, you know, one medication would make this work. And then this medication would make that worse. So I was just like, felt like I was circling the drain. Um, you know, and things just got really dark, really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be where the mental side of just feeling like there's no hope or, or there's no end to this. And that's right. the part where it takes you on a long journey, doesn't it? Oh, it's, it, it, it was the longest journey because it's like you don't know what came you know what came when and yeah. so things become so enmeshed uh, and I think things are so enmeshed uh, when it comes to emotions and trauma and the pain and pain and physical pain and emotional trauma and, and how those things really do right. have like a synergistic effect yeah. And it began, you know, just such a long journey uh, yeah, yeah. for me of, of trying to figure out 
what to do next. Yeah. And yours has been like years of going from right. doctor to hospital through ha, any idea how many surgeries or, or different doctors. I have over 20 procedures done on my kidneys where they've had to put in stents. And you know that's a whole other thing that's incredibly uh, painful stents are. And then we've tried to find all kinds of doctors everywhere in the Southeast and really all over the country. Right. So that was, you know, months of just, um, you know, being a professional patient. Yeah. And they see a lot of cases like that, I'm sure, but your case is really unusual. Yours is one of it those. Is. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> we're trying to find a cure, but right. I mean, you, just, you, you just keep coming with more kidney stones. It's like a right. factory or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was, that's how I felt like, I'm like, I did, I did not, uh, this was not the thing that I wanted to be. I thought I broke the mold in life, right? Every, yeah. Everybody wants to be known for something, but not this. I know, that was, I know. Yeah. I know. Well, now let me ask you this. When you when you went through some of that, I know you leaned on the Lord and had, and you mm -hmm. leaned in your faith a lot. And that, that, that was probably sometimes the only thing and the only place you could turn. Absolutely. Uh, but even that, were there times that you just say, God, are you hearing me? I mean, is there, a, 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 when, when, is there an answer nearby? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I think that uh, for me, I it was the first time in my life that I had really had my faith tested. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents had, and as you, you know, if people listen to my dad's story, he's obviously had his faith tested. Um, but I, Abigail, like was having this crisis of faith because right. I'm like, like you have the ability to change it, God, like you have the ability to make things different. Wow. And what do you do in life? What, did, what was I going to do when I knew that his will was exceeding his power? Yeah. He had the ability to change it, but he wasn't doing it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why, why, why? Yeah. And I stopped asking why, why are you not healing me? And I really started to shift it from why to what, what is it that you are trying to teach me in this season? Yeah. Um, and realizing that my story, you know, is not my own. Yeah, that's right. Um, and trusting that it was for a plan that was much bigger than myself and that it had um, a lot more to do um, with other people than it did about me. Now, let me ask you all, all that while wow, does that, when you, when you're dealing with those issues that affects a lot of your social life too. Doesn't it? I mean, you, you can't get out and go places like you'd want to, because if you plan an event, you might be in the hospital or, mm -hmm. or something like that. So all of that plays a part in the mental side as well, right? The emotional, mental, the. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, the isolation when we are isolated, it gives the devil just like free reign almost, mm. you know? Uh, and that's why I think that COVID and this pandemic has been so hard for so many people. Yeah. Um, it's because we have been isolated. And I feel like uh, for me, that isolation was just, it was so toxic mm -hmm. uh, because the more, you know, you feel like you're not worthy. At least I did. I felt like I wasn't worthy of hanging out with people who would want to hang out with somebody who's sick oh. um, all the time and always, you know, complaining or always. And I looked one way on the outside right. and I looked like, you know, I wasn't hurting and you can't see yeah. my pain when you look at me, but it was absolutely real. I remember the first time your dad told me that about how much, and I was going, what, how much? And he was saying this hospital, and I'd only had two kidney stones in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm already empathizing with you and said, good night. What, and, 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 but you know, your positive attitude and, and all the rest and you're attractive and all that. So you didn't look like this person just walking around suffering or here I am. I'm barely, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Uh, mm -hmm. you, they wouldn't know on the inside of that was this person that was barely able to get through. And, right. uh, but yet you did it, Abigail. That's there, there, there's, there's gold in you already. I mean, you, you, you got the right DNA and God's hands on your life. You're at a stage in life where you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm no longer the college age. I'm not, I'm not, you know, um, I'm not ready to retire. I'm right here right. in this life. And I know you're enjoying it. What is it that you want to do with your life? What is it that you say, if I could just be 
if I could just, you know, invest in something or do something, this is what, this is who I am. I know um, beyond a shadow of a doubt that my calling is to share my story. Yeah. Um, and it's to give other people hope um, mm-hmm. and to share with them what God shared with me. Um, which really is Matthew 10, 27. And it says, you know, whatever uh, I whisper in your ear in the dark, you'll remember in the light and you'll preach upon the housetops. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good word. I can remember so many nights where I didn't know if I could go on mentally or physically. um, And that I just prayed, God, please just give me hope. And I would would truly close my eyes and I would visualize myself on a stage mm-hmm. um, speaking to people mm-hmm. and saying, I, I made this and, be, yeah. and I made it through this and I, I made it through this because of him. And my dad said this to me as I was going through through everything. He said, Abigail, live your story now the way you want to tell it later. Yeah. without having to change anything. Mm-hmm. So be faithful. And there were absolutely moments where I, I wasn't faithful or where I did question where God was in all of this. Um, but I never doubted that he had a plan for me. Yeah. Um, and I feel like his purpose and plan for me is to give other, um, other people hope and let them know that they aren't alone. You got that and you do it. Abigail, I'm glad to see you finally telling your story, you know, because truth is, is that I believe all these years, God's been putting it in you and letting you go through it. And Mm -hmm. it's always, I've noticed the people that go the furthest and have the biggest audience were the ones that he kept back kind of in the shadows, the longest, Mm -hmm. whether it be like the David or the Abrahams or or the Josephs. And, and they didn't jump out first. I mean, they wasn't on the platform at 13. Right. But they went through all that, and then the day came that suddenly they, their their platform was huge. I think that's what God's doing in your life. I think there's a definite calling, and uh, what you've been through is going to wind up being the message that helps other people that that are where you have been. So thank you. You're on the right track. Uh, thank you, thank you. There's power in everyone's story. Mm-hmm. There's so much power in everyone's story, and you know I've been incredibly blessed to go to places um, like the place that really changed my life is a place called Onsite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and Onsite is, um, is a, an emotional um, workshop uh, play, place where you can go to emo- emotional workshops. And it's uh, the one I did in particular is called the Living Centered Program. Mm-hmm. And um, basically the whole premise is like, you have to collect the dots in your life before you can connect the dots. Hmm. Good. Yeah. And um, and so many times when we are going through things or we are uh, bumping up against things, whether it's inside of ourselves or with other people, um, what it looks like on the surface that we're upset about really isn't that. It isn't fighting about a couch. You're okay. really fighting about <laughs> Yeah. That there's something way deeper that's going on, you know, that there's something that is bumping up against somebody else's money script or somebody else's, you know, abandonment issues or whatever. And we think that it's about these little things in our lives that we seem to, you know, not be able to get along about or have fights about with other people, or we're sad about this, or we're sad about that. But it's really onsite gives you a chance to look really deep inside of yourself and figure out what some of those messages you even received as a child were. So it gave you the chance to do introspection. You got a chance to be with other people too. That I didn't understand the beauty of community until I went to onsite. Good. And, and what a beautiful thing it is to sit in a place and to have somebody not want to fix it or to not feel offended because it, that they are part of, you know, their, your story, mm-hmm. but it's just you being there with strangers. And this, this part totally scared me because you can't go with people that, you know, and you're just completely vulnerable and they are witnessing you and you're witnessing them share their story. They're a witness to your pain. Yeah. Gosh. And That's- just experiencing that was, was life-changing for me. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, that really was, that was the life changer. That was a transformation. So how sweet. Yes, it was. 
Yeah, they, they, Abigail, here's the deal. I, I think you've done everything right. You know, I mean, to have gotten where you've gone with the health issues, you couldn't help, but you still held in there, girl. And then, you know, how it breaks on you mentally and where it puts you there. Mm -hmm. And yet you didn't fold, you know, it's, and the thing I'd say about you is kind of like your song could be, I'm still standing, you know, <laughs> everything came after me, but I'm still here. And, uh, and you've done well. I want your message to be able to, to be used a lot. I, I hope that, I hope that perhaps some listeners will, will, will listen in and get encouragement from you because you are that. A few things you said a moment ago that I was just going, good night. That's good stuff. So uh, thank you. Thanks for sharing with me today. Okay. Thank you for giving me um, just a platform to be able to speak and to, to get my message out. And I would love for people to be able to connect with me on Instagram. It is Abigail Reichard. Okay. Um, that's my uh, handle. And, yeah. um, and I would just love if there's people that listen to this and they just want to reach out and need somebody to talk to. I love to connect on DM and I'm just, I want my space, but just to be a resource and a, and a place for people to come uh, that need um, just help on brain health and, and mental um, health. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think you're on the right track and in the right direction, girl. Thank you. and you're, you're beautiful on the inside as well as you're on the outside. And I thank God for you, Abigail. And so, You're very kind. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity. Um, I, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the BP Leadership Podcast. Now, if you enjoyed this episode and all of our other ones, we need you to do a few things for us. We need you to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We need you to like these episodes comment on these episodes and share them with a friend. We want the world to see the incredible content that Bill Purpose is consistently pushing out right here on this platform, BP Leadership Podcast. So make sure you do that if you haven't subscribed already, whether that's on YouTube or all of our awesome audio platforms that we're listed on so that everybody can hear this. So make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe, and you share the BP Leadership Podcast.